just recently I did a little special on long wheelbase luxury saloon cars. I featured an old S-Class, BMW 760Li and a brand new Audi A8L. Now, in that week, there was one brand that I know I missed out. Well, actually, there's a couple, but there's one that is quite close to my heart. Jaguar. Unfortunately, last year, Jaguar announced the end of production for their XJ. And the end of the road for the XJ is a big old petrol-powered saloon car. The next version being an all-new electric thingamabob. I was very sad at that because I missed the availability of a Jag XJ press car by only a short amount of time. And I thought, damn it, it's going to be a while until I can try one of those. That was until Sean got in touch and asked me what I thought of the new Jag. And I told him, I'm sorry, Sean, I, I just don't know. So he said, why don't you come and try mine? And so that's what I'm here to do today. Now, Sean is a man after my own heart because, you see, he loves not just the long wheelbase luxury saloon, but also the bargain performance car because his is a 2010 Jaguar XJL Super Sport. What does that mean? Well, the Super Sport is one of the variants of the XJL which got the supercharged V8 in it. At the time this car was made, there wasn't an XJR. This particular era of vehicle got a 510 horsepower version of that Ford derived 5 litre V8. At the end of the XJ's run, these things were kicking out about 575 horsepower, same as the other JLR products of the time, and if you want to make this thing go faster, that is fairly easy to do. I would ask people to ignore the fact that it's a little bit dirty. The weather around here has been somewhat inclement, and Sean has been very, very kind and driven a fair way to come out for the review today. This car has close to six-figure mileage, and when he picked it up, it was one of the cheapest available. Ooh, Rolls-Royce. Bet he's not having as much fun as I am. The XJ is a curious thing. I have driven the other saloons that were in the Jaguar lineup at the time, the XE and the XF, and to some extent enjoy both of them, perhaps the XE more than the XF. What's really odd is that if you look at the weight figure of all of them, it's near enough the same. They're all about 1.8 tonnes. Which, when it comes to the XJ, is remarkable because it's actually pretty lightweight for a car that is this large. But when you go the other way and look at the XE, it's pretty unforgivable because that's a hell of a weight for a car that's not actually that big. Way more than the equivalent BMW. Now, this would have been competing with the 7 Series that replaced my own. I can't remember the chassis code for it. It's probably an F something or other. Uh, but BMW, by the time, started turbocharging their engines. My car has the last of the naturally aspirated V12s. It's 6 litres to this Jags 5, but is still down on power and torque. My car having about 440 of each versus this car's 500 and a bit power. And near enough the same on torque. In terms of modifications, this car is basically standard. The only significant modification really is to the intake system. It's got some different pipes on it because the original ones failed, and it's got some K&N panel filters in there too, mostly for oral purposes. At the back, the exhaust and everything else is currently standard, but in the boot there is something of a surprise. Yes, yeah, see, Sean felt that the sound system in this car was all right. It's a Bowers and Wilkins unit, but just lacked a little bit of punch. And he's um he's been working on that. I'm going to sample that in a little bit. But before I do, I want to really sample what the XJ is all about. I love this category of car because they are so ludicrously versatile. They are the sort of thing that you can just poodle around in like I'm doing now, well under the speed limit, and just be enjoying myself. If we were following something right now, I wouldn't even be that mad. But when the mood takes you, this is also the sort of car that should be able to encourage the hooligan in you. So I'm going to drop it down again and just gently depress the right pedal, uh, taking caution because unlike more modern Jags, this car puts all of those 500 horses through just the two rear wheels. It's a lovely thing. Now, it doesn't sort of throw you into the back of the seat, but what it does is simply build and 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 so on and so forth. You get the idea. There is effortless performance on tap. 
this car has the older six-speed gearbox, which originally I was kind of more anti because I know that in any technical sense, the newer eight-speed is a far better unit. However, when it comes to engines that are as ludicrously flexible as this, having fewer ratios can sometimes be a little bit better because, well, the gearbox just doesn't have to do quite as much when you ask it to give you some forward momentum. The ride is actually quite interesting. It's a little bit fidgety and there's a lot going on, but it's still very comfortable. Uh, these seats are gorgeous. This armrest here is lovely and soft and all the leather in here is rather nice. Now, Jaguar did facelift this car midway through its production run and one of the things they improved a lot was the interior, particularly for the rear passengers. They also sorted out the sunroof, which likes to rattle and a few other things too. However, whichever XJ you're after, they are basically all bargains. Even the very last of line 575 models are now available for well under their original asking prices. This was a very significant car for Jaguar. It announced their new styling language and it was a major departure for the XJ which is their flagship model. Now I must confess that I'm not entirely on board with the styling direction that they chose for this car. The front end looks great but the rear just never quite worked for me. They've tried to do this whole Coupaloon thing, which became very popular in period, the CLS, the, the Audi A7, all that sort of stuff. But I think this car's just a, a little bit too big to pull that off. You can change gears yourself. There's a rotary selector down here, which is just for changing the mode, and you have little paddles behind the wheel. They're not particularly great to use, but they, they do their job. You've got drive and sport mode, and if I'm being completely honest, sport mode just makes the gear shift a, a little bit harsher than it needs to be. It's an odd interior in here. I'm not quite sure what this, um, well, it looks like mock alligator uh, is doing here. But I do like the carbon fiber, the speaker grills look nice enough, and these switches here I recognize from the Ford catalog, and in fact Volvo is still using them in the XC90. So whoever designed those, they've, uh, they've got some mileage out of them. There is plenty of room in the back. I'm not a big fan of the light colored headlining, but the material is absolutely gorgeous. This is leather. This is leather. This is nice. I do like a barge. Now, this car was picked up a couple of years ago for less than 20 grand. Just let that sink in. Less than 20,000 of your earth pounds. Even if you look at it simply as how cheaply can I get 500 supercharged horses, that's a bargain. Then chuck in the fact that you're getting all of this, all of this stuff. Now, okay, down here, the, the, the display, criminally out of date, it's a bit hilarious. But you know what? It, it's fine. It was quite a trick at the time. I noticed that it's got the same sort of duo view system uh, that my father had in his Range Rover Evoque. So the passenger can get a different view or a different screen than the driver, which was very trick and very novel. And I don't think anyone ever really knew how to make it work. But everything else is rather nice. It does have a dynamic mode, which I'm going to uh, enable just for scientific purposes. firms up the ride a little bit, or he does some other stuff as well. Um, steering, let's talk about steering, because this is one thing I, I love in Jags. For a big old boat, this is very direct. These are unfortunately not the roads or the right time to really push this car that hard in corners or things like that, but actually, it, it finds a very good middle ground between being nice and easy and light, which a big barge should be, because it should be a relaxing car to drive, and also quite engaging. You, know, you, you don't need too much of an input to get the car to do what you want it to, it's all, all really rather nice. That's something, again, Jaguar seemed to get quite right. This seat is extremely comfortable, perhaps not quite as supportive as I might like it, but a very nice thing indeed anyway. The excellent news as well is that this car has not lived up to the famous JLR reputation for steadfast reliability. Basically, nothing has gone wrong with this car. The only real fault has been a coolant-related issue, which was actually a, a, a garage's fault. That's not the car braking. And once... The display down here stopped working. This is a digital display, Jaguar's first digital display, and I'm not a fan of these displays because they don't really do anything that the old dials didn't, 
But when this car came out, it was a fairly new thing, and I think Jaguar are pretty early to market with it, so I can kind of forgive this in a way that I can't the more modern current cars. And ultimately, this car is comfy, it's quiet when you want it to be, loud when you want it to be, it's luxurious, and it is a bargain. And that is what big barges should all be about. Brakes work too, which is quite nice to know. The XJL, I'm not a fan of the looks, but crikey, I, I, I do like this car. Hmm. Would I replace my BMW with it? That's a really difficult question, because you know what? This does feel special in here, and that's, that's important and something that doesn't happen often in cars. There, there's a lot that's wrong with it, but you know what? There's so much that's right too. The XJL is a hit for me. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.